So in this video, we're going to talk about a permanent change in demand. And we already know that a decrease in demand would shift the market demand curve left, as I have here, this example. And in that case, price will fall and the quantity will decrease. So uh, pretty much the market price falls and each firm decreases the quantity it produces. So that is exactly what we have here. In this case, there is a decrease in demand and that shifted our demand curve left. And when our demand curve is shift left, um, the new intersection between demand and supply is moved from here to here, from D0 to D1. So the market price obviously fell and for each firm, um, the quantity, uh, each firm, the quantity produced, produced by each firm also decreases from Q0 to Q1. Now, the market price is uh, now below each firm's minimum um, average total cost because if we take this new price and reflect it into this second graph that I have here, you can see that this new price, MR1, is below the firm's minimum average total cost. So because it is below the average total cost, the firms are incurring economic losses. Now, these losses, these economic losses, will induce some firms to exit in the long run. And when some firms exit, then uh, this will decrease the market supply. And when the market supply decreases, some, some other thing happens. Price increases. When we decrease our quantity up to a certain point, um, the specific product that we are selling becomes more rarer. And in that case, you can logically think that as there, as the, if demand doesn't change and the supply decreases, then the price of that supply increases. And that is shown here with this red arrow. Now, as firm as the price increase or rises, the quantity produced by all firms uh, decreases as more firms exit, but each remaining firm will will increase the quantity of the supply uh, that is of the supply that uh, that was being made by everybody before all these changes occurred. So that is shown by uh, by this purple arrow. Uh, you can see here that the price is still increasing and uh, all firms, well, as more firms exit, as more, as more firms exit, the supply, the aggregate supply of the whole market is still decreasing. That is why, uh, that is why our supply curve shifted left even more than phase one, as we can call it. So all in all, uh, a new long run equilibrium occurs when the price has uh, risen to equal the minimum average total cost. So when the price rises, as you can see here, it rises up to uh, the minimum average total cost, firms will break even and no more firms exit because as shown in this graph uh, the price has risen to back to MR0 and it is again um, equal to the average total cost and in that case there is zero economic profit and no firms exit because no firms are uh, experiencing economic losses. So that is the main difference between the original and the new long-run equilibrium. That is the number of firms in the market. Fewer firms make the equilibrium quantity in this, uh, in this new scenario. So let's go through an overview of what happened. So what happened is uh, 
there was a decrease in demand, and the decrease in demand brought firms to um, pretty much, well, first it caused the price to fall and the quantity to fall. And this caused the market price to fall, and then each firm decreased the quantity it produces. Because the price fell, it is below the minimum average total cost. So some firms incur losses, and when some firms incur losses, some decide to opt out and exit the market. And in that case, uh, the supply in the market drops and the price rises. As the price rises, then the quantity produced by all firms decrease as more firms exit. So that is that is why this supply curve moved leftward even more because um, in the whole the entire market for the for that supply decreased. But then this is uh, easily made up by all the remaining firms, which simply increased the quantity they supplied. And in the long run, the equilibrium in long run equilibrium, uh, the price will rise up to the normal point again, which is up to the price where it broke even with the average total cost. And when the firms broke even, then no more firms exit. So pretty much uh, a permanent increase in demand, on the other hand, has the opposite effects of what I just showed you. And a permanent increase in demand means that the demand curve shifts right. And also, the price rises and the quantity increases. Um, economic profit uh, simply implies entry, and this increases the short run supply, and it shifts the short run market supply curve right. As market supply increases, price falls, and market co market quantity continues increasing. With falling price, the firm decreases output as as it goes along its marginal cost supply curve. New long-run equilibrium rises, wait, that didn't make any sense at all, with falling price, yeah, falling price only implies that the firms uh, will decrease their output as it goes along its marginal, uh, marginal cost curve, yeah, that makes more sense. Uh, new long-run equilibrium rises when the price has fallen to the minimum average total cost. Firms make uh, zero profit and then firms have no incentive to enter the market. The main difference between the initial and new long-run equilibrium is the number of firms. In a new equilibrium, the larger number of firms uh, produce the equilibrium quantity. So this uh, is pretty much the opposite of what we just did. and. Uh, I guess it's a good exercise for you guys to figure out or draw the graphs of what would happen uh, what would happen when there is a permanent increase in demand and that is pretty similar to this except that demand goes right uh, goes rightward and a bunch of other shit happens that you should figure out it's a really good exercise and I suggest that you should do it but other than that uh, that is the end of this video. I hope I made it clear enough. Uh, I think that the graphs were very uh, simplistic, uh, were very good and sim good and simplistic that you could easily follow along. But please uh, leave a comment if you have any questions, and also uh, rate and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys next time for external economies and economies. Thanks for watching.